beautiful weather we're having today. <laughs> That's right, guys. It's a cold and wet one today. It's snowing in Texas in some parts. By the way, this is Jason with JW Classic VW, and welcome back to the vlog, guys. And that's Goose. My 1956 old window right top. We've been doing a series on how to rebuild your 40 horsepower Volkswagen engine, and we're going to be getting right back into that after this intro, guys. See you in a second. So we're having uh, some wonderful weather, as you can see, but is that gonna stop us from moving forward with this video? No, absolutely not. And what do we got going on? Well, a few things have come up since the last time I talked to you guys and uh, the last video on the 40 horsepower engine. When I went ahead and put the two case halves together and did the dry fit, and I was able to turn the crank, I was able to move it pretty fast without any kind of restrictions. But when I slowed it down and I turned the crank, I found it kind of hanging up in certain spots. <laughs> That's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. And with that, I had to go ahead and do a line bore. So, what does that mean we have to do now? Well, we have to take apart the crank, pull all the bearings off, <laughs> clean the case for like the third time. But let me show you guys real quick what I'm talking about. Turn you around. Oh, all covered up so I can go, voila! <laughs> so what do we got going on, guys? We're going to have to go ahead and pull off the gears here off the crank because we're no longer there. We went ahead and line board the case 20 over, so these bearings need to be replaced with the ones that I got right here that are for a standard crank with a 20 over line bore. See right there? Oh, uh, maybe not. Yeah, see, standard or 20 over. Yeah. And I went with silver line bearings again because these are the ones I like. These steel back bearings are pretty fantastic. What do we got to do to do this? Well, we got to use this tool right here. The tool designed for pulling off the gears the right way. Take our case, clean it up, and then go ahead and do a test fit again. There she is. There's the case sitting on the ground, surrounded by a lighting. Hold on a second. Let's move this out and up to the bench real quick. We got a couple of things to do today, not just clean up the case, but I also need to go ahead and, you know that stud from uh, the last episode? The stud that was, I don't think this is it. Uh, tighten up, bro. The stud is not tightening up. Jeez Louise. Does that seem right to you guys? Like it's taking it out of the block. All right. This one right here, this stud. Let me bring you guys down a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So yeah, this stud right here. Whenever I was uh, torquing down the case halves, this stud uh, started kind of pulling out. So what I had to do is pick up some uh, M8 threaded rod and we're gonna be replacing this stud right here and going in a little bit farther with some red Loctite to make sure that that's good to go. Now you look and see all of the debris that's in here. Yeah, all that's going to be cleaned up. We're gonna go back through and clean up all the oil galleries. But you can also see we've got a fresh line bore here. Ooh, pretty. So part of that uh, doing the line bore and then replacing the bearings, we're also gonna to have to go ahead and uh, check out our oil galleries again. Because remember right here where we kind of notched it out, where it wasn't lined up where it needed to be? Well, we're gonna to go back through and do that on the new bearings. That's not gonna be part of this video because you guys have already seen that done. I'm gonna be just doing that in the background. And like magic, we'll be good to go. So for today's video, I'll be working on getting the bearings off of here and uh, Reclocking these oil gallery, gallery locations so they've got better oil flow and then getting this stud inserted But uh, first off we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take care of this portion of it taking this part 
Well, I guess you guys might want to watch that. Let me uh, pull the uh, the uh, crank off here and the, the crank gear and the, the bearing. So, yeah. Stay tuned, guys. Let me go ahead and relocate some things, and we'll be pulling that stuff off here in a second. Let's get you out of the way for a little bit. All right. All right, all right, all right. Don't need you right now. Yes. And move you out of the way a little bit. There we go. I have all kinds of different punches and stuff in here. And this is kind of like the one you want to use. Similar to this one. I already knocked this a couple times, but just keep hitting it. And then she'll just keep coming out. If you had like another set of hands to go to the other side of this, it'd be really good. Wouldn't oh, you guys want to help me out with this and hold the crank on the other side? No? I got it? Okay. Who's that? <laughs> Doop. Oh, get back here. All right. This part's easy. The uh, oil slinger just comes off, no problem. Let's stick you over there. We can hold on to these uh, bearings because you never know. I might end up installing a, another crank at some point Point that's uh, for standard. Now we gotta go ahead and get this this uh, circlip off of here. And I really recommend you guys use the right kind of tool for this and I just happen to have it, so give me a second. Something like this right here. Yes, it's made for removing the clip. You want to be careful because if you don't have the right tool, you can scar up the surface of your crank. When you see somebody else doing it, right? Yeah, that's that's just it. There we go. Good. That's off. So now we can go ahead and install our puller on here and pull these bad boys off and What's nice is the crank is already kind of oiled up from the uh, Marvel's Mystery Oil that I put on here, so it shouldn't be that much of a pain in the butt coming off of here. So one of the good things that, uh, or one of the things I recommend that you do with this tool anyway, is kind of make sure that your threads are lubed up here and make sure that things move nice and easy. And I usually use like, uh, it's like some grease or something. I actually have some white lithium I'm going to put on here real quick. And uh, a little goes a long way. Well, at least with this stuff, anyway. See if it can assist us in holding everything in place. Maybe. It's moving, guys. You guys see it? Move you a little bit. Got it. <laughs> Good stuff. I can just pull our bearing off. Right. Cool. A little oily, but clean to go. We can go ahead and move the crank up out of the way and get ready to uh, insert that stud and fix the case. Okay, guys, it's time to go ahead and do the uh, stud install on the uh, block. And these are the, the, uh, actual bolts that I picked up off of Amazon. And if you are curious about what type of uh, metal these are made out of, this, these are a stainless steel. And if you're curious or you want to pick some up, check out the description below. And as always, guys, they are Amazon links and I'm an Amazon affiliate. So if you pick up something that's down there that's linked to an Amazon uh, product, then you're helping out the channel and I appreciate you. Good stuff. So let's get the uh, block back up here and get this in place and kind of figure out how long I need to make it to work with the block. All right, this should be pretty straightforward just to kind of get a rough idea of how long this needs to be so that we can get it to work right because it goes right through the block to about this side right there. So this is kind of a basic measurement that we can go off of. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold one of these up here and we can start like this. 
get a rough idea of where we want to cut at. And then I can kind of trim it as I need to a little bit more with my grinder. And that's how I'm going to go ahead and do this, guys. So let's go ahead and uh, mark this real quick. I'm going to cut it. And then the way that I'm going to do this is the end that I cut is actually going to be inserted into the block so that we have the clean, actually machined end as our, our portion that's sticking out of the block. And you can see these two right here. I went ahead and uh, I've replaced these two studs already, these two right here, with the same type of uh, stainless steel bolt and did the same thing. And that's because I pulled these out to use on the Mendola mid, uh, mid trans support because I had to extend those studs a little bit out of the transmission to get it to work right. So let's go ahead and uh, open up the case here and get to work. Do, 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 do. All right. So we're cutting right here on the tape. Easy peasy. So I went ahead and stuck a couple of these nuts on here. These are just the 13 mil M8 nuts. And uh, you're going to need two of them anyway to double up whenever you're running a stud in to the block the way that I am. But let's go ahead and clean this up first because that looks kind of gnarly. <laughs> it won't take much work with the uh, different disc that we have here, the angle grinder. So we'll go ahead and pull off the uh, cutoff wheel. This one up on here. Let's go ahead and make some quick work to clean this off, yeah. And so you could take like a uh, a uh, die and back this off and clean these off really easy. We see how they're kind of roughed up right now? Just because that's just a grinder, that's what it does. So you just take this, these nuts that's on here like so, work our way down. And I might need to stick a 13 mil wrench on this in a second, but we'll see. Let's focus on one. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and back this bad boy off. See what we got here. I'm just gonna work it back and forth a couple times just to clean these threads off. You can see it kind of working the crap out of there. See? They give us a nice clean uh, clean threads. If you don't happen to have like a I do have a, a die over there, you know, I could just from like tap die kit, but uh, you guys may not have that, so this actually might be what you have to do. Yeah, that, that was definitely not going to be done by hand. Now, the, the main difference between red Loctite and blue Loctite is that, well, for what I found anyway, is that when I use red Loctite and I'm trying to break something free or try to get it out after I've put it in, I end up having to heat it up. With blue Loctite, I've never really had to do that. But red Loctite, I sure as heck have. This has already been kind of not locked down, these two nuts here. So let's just go ahead and just, I'm gonna tighten it down as far as it'll go. Maybe a little farther. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're getting some good threads now. That's the thing with these studs too, they only go in so far, the uh, studs that are originally in the block. And there's a reason for that too. You know, you don't wanna go so far that you cause problems or possibly split your case. Another thing you could do to repair this as well is drill all the way through it because it doesn't go into the block, drill all the way through this particular one and then you could just put a nut on the other side of it if you're so inclined. Like I said, it really depends on what your options are. Oh, oh, right about there. Ooh. 
It's actually a little short. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Happens to all of us, guys. Happens to all of us. Take two. <laughs> Hey, look at that, guys. Good on the first try. <laughs> All right, so I always think it's a little bit better to have a little bit more stud than not enough stud. So that's cool. No problem. So that's not going to hurt anything. Plus, we get the washer and the nut on there. No problem. Repair complete. <laughs> hey, guys, Jason from JW Classic BW, and I'm taking away from the video for one second to remind you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, guys. Helps with the channel and helps out this video. Now, back to the video. Hey guys, what's going on? It's been a few days since uh, I recorded the video. The first sign of that is it. Well, it is sunny and gorgeous outside right now. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. The only problem is I got roosters and children in the background <laughs> just playing havoc on JW Classic VW's videos. What I got going on this morning? Well, I took my dick lid off so I could go ahead and uh, cue the rooster. <laughs> go ahead and do a little bit of touch-up painting on this area here. I did a repair on this a while back, welded it. I don't think I did a video on that, but uh, yeah, we took care of that. Case is on the ground. It's all been cleaned out. I gotta go ahead and stick it up into the engine stand and hit it with some brake clean and clean up the surfaces one more time before we go ahead and start the uh, short block assembly. We got the crank up here, all back together with the new uh, 20 over bearings installed. So that's good to go. Let me go ahead and show the engine real quick. So I get questions all the time about the general. And I thought, well, since the deck lid's off, I'll go ahead and show you guys what's going on. We'll start back here with the two uh, separate venting cleaners I have. These are the ones that you can buy from MP. And I went with two because it just made sense to me to have uh, one on either bank of the actual engine, one two side and the three four side. Here is my fuel pressure gauge, my fancy artwork. <laughs> I run the Magnus Spark 2 on this for my distributor, electronic. This is also a CB Performance pulley. And then uh, one of my little tricks to keep this, uh, the generator hold from coming off, because sometimes with a high power engine that happens where this thing slips off, is I took a piece of uh, rubber and stuck it up underneath here to keep that from happening. It helps absorb some of the vibrations and stuff. All kinds of other good stuff going on here. My evil energy lines for uh, venting. There's the kids, right? They're having a good old time. <laughs> what a great Saturday. But if you have any questions about my 2276, just hit me up in the comments below, guys. So, yeah, what have we done so far? Well, so far we've gone ahead and uh, had the case line board. Like I told you guys, we repaired the few studs inside the case. And then we went ahead and re well, we re clocked, we clearanced the bearings to go ahead and line up better with the oil galleries. Let me show you real quick. Really easy to see on this bearing that's been installed. Cue the rooster. And you just do a little printing with some paint like I showed you guys in the previous video. And then clearance the, uh, the bearing so that it lines up better with the oil gallery in the case. And that helps out with oiling of the, uh, of the crank. Good stuff. So let me get the engine back into the engine stand, and then we'll get to work on the short block assembly. See you in a second. All right, guys, we are at the part of the fun time to start doing the uh, 
I guess, the, the retest fit. Let me go ahead and turn you around real quick and show you the case. All right, so I got the case all cleaned up and mounted back into the engine stand. Bearings are back in place. Remember, we've already uh, clearanced the bearings for the cam so that everything fits the way it's supposed to. So that's all good to go. Uh, went ahead and put in all my old dolls. So those are in there. Bring you over to the bench real quick. Remember, guys, that we are using uh, Marvel's Mystery Oil for the actual uh, test fitting because if you try to use assembly lube right now, like assembly lube, like this assembly lube, if you try to use assembly lube right now, it can give you a false reading or a false feel of how everything is fitting, and you don't want that. So everything is going to have some Marvel's Mystery Oil on here, and then we'll go ahead and put in the crank, put in the cam, and see how everything is fitting. All right. Yeah, we got our bearings in over here. Don't forget, we want to leave out this centerpiece, this center bearing, because we're going to use that to test fit the crank once we have it in place. I'm going to get you guys up in the tripod and set up. Little bit of marbles. Little marbles. We're not going to be using, putting the lifters in yet either, guys. The lifters, we already kind of test fit it. We know that there's, those are good to go. So right now, we're just going to put a little lube on the cam bearings, and then let's get the crank over here. Don't want to forget that center bearing. And you make sure that you're uh, <laughs> putting the one that you clearanced down, that you clearanced for the uh, oil gallery. This is where you see how marking your bearings ahead of time really can help you out. Break it down a little bit so you can see with the zoom. All right, so you can kind of get a rough placement where things go. Like, you know that this, uh, like, moon shape right here is going to be over on this side. Let me turn this around to where it's supposed to be. That's closer. Get our back rear bearing in place. There we go. Oh, closer. Oh, that's it. That felt like it. All right, let's rotate a little bit. Oh, yeah. Nice. And this is the, the check, guys. The check to see if everything is seat, seated all the way down. Well, there's a little bit of a little bit of play in there. Not a bunch, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at everything real quick. Maybe hit it a couple times with the mallet to get it seated the rest of the way in. So what happens is when you have a line bore that's a tight line bore, sometimes oops, sorry, sometimes the uh, the bearings need to be get a little bit of help to get all the way down in there. It's just because it's a nice tight fit. All right. Oh, that's it. There's no play now. That's all it was. Just the uh, bearings need a little help getting seated down in there. But, yep, good to go. Now we can go ahead and take this uh, center bearing and put it back in the other case half. Hello, rooster. Other case half and uh, drop the other case half on here after we put the cam in. Okay, starting with the rear two, 14 foot pounds. Don't forget if you're using an extension, sometimes that can throw off what you're getting, so we'll see how that works out. And that's 13 millimeter, guys. The elusive 13 millimeter, just like the elusive 10 millimeter. Move to our main mains here for the use file at home. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I didn't find that anywhere in any book, but if you watch J Bug's video, they have one in the. It's about that. That's about it. You start with the center, work your way out. All right, let's hit that uh, 15 foot pounds.
Oh yeah. Feels good. Feels good. Let's go ahead and move up to the uh, to the um, twenty four foot pounds or thirty three newton meters. Let me the uh, final torque for twenty four foot pounds. Super smooth. Yep, there's my lady. Sitting out there wondering where we're going to go for a cruise again. <laughs> Alright guys, good stuff. Good line bore, good test fit. I've got to tear it all apart now and then go ahead and get it ready for the final assembly of the short block. Be back in a second after I get this all torn apart and we'll go ahead and do that. It's short block time. Time to go ahead and mate the cases, to, the case halves together for like the last time. All right. So let's go ahead and turn it around real quick, show you what's going on. All right, man. These are the different types of uh, compounds or uh, sealants that I use. Curial T is like the, the primary one that I use. I've heard that Yamabon's pretty good too, but I've never really used it. Also, I'm using Cam Shield for my lifters to go ahead and mate those and get those broken in correctly. Uh, some assembly lube. And then I have all of my uh, pieces and parts over here ready to go. I'll show you the case real quick. All right, we already got the uh, cam breaking lube on top of the lifters. Got some, uh, some assembly lube already put on the uh, bearings themselves. Everything is ready to rock and roll. Let's go ahead and put some uh, sealant on the case house here. got the uh, new lifters in the other side of the case half make sure that we have our bearing in place put some assembly lube on the uh, on the bearings for the cam let's go ahead and put some assembly lube on right here just a little bit 
you saw that I put some assembly loop on the lifters as well. Let's go ahead and put the clips on, and it's time to move over to mate in the case. All right, there you go. Lifter clips in. Ready to move on over to the other side. All right, guys, case half is case half start together. It's time to go ahead and go through the whole torque down process. We went over this earlier, so let's just go ahead and zoom zoom through it. So the reason why I use Cure LT is it doesn't really ever harden. It kind of stays pliable and uh, flexible, and I think that helps keep leaks from happening. So I also use Cure LT on all of my hardware, on the uh, mains and uh, towards the front and the cam areas. As I put the washers down on, I go ahead and turn them a little bit to go ahead and get the sealant around inside there. You just kind of like turn it around so I'm get that sealant going. I'm gonna go ahead and use the speed wrench to get these down a little ways and then come back with my torque wrench to stage up the torquing. Make sure things turn it okay still. Oh yeah. We start with the rear cam. Uh, hardware first, 14 foot pounds, and then you can start working your way on the, the mains. So my for, first torque on the uh, mains was at uh, 14 foot-pounds. We're going to move up to uh, 20 foot-pounds now, and then a final torque of 24 foot-pounds. However you stage it up is really up to you, as long as you end up at 24 foot-pounds and that it's a staged torque. So you can go ahead and check for uh, mobility in your uh, your uh, crank and bearings that you're not binding up anywhere. Good. File torque of 24 foot pounds. Now we'll go out, go around, and go ahead and do all the outer ones except for the three up to the front here for the oil pump. One, two, three. We'll leave those until we get the oil pump in. Shiny. So yeah, you look at this here and you got some pitting going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some sandpaper and a piece of uh, steel and go ahead and resurface this a little bit. Got some 500 grit sandpaper here. Simple as having a flat surface and some sandpaper just to resurface this a little bit. Should make pretty quick work of it. Mm, yes, looking really good. All right, it's time for the oil pump. Let's 
turn you over a little bit. Get you right side up. A couple seals you'll need for the uh, oil pump that I have here. It's got uh, the smaller stud. It's not the M8 studs. I think these are like, oh, probably M6 studs. So you, you have two of these, one for the oil pump that seals against the, the case itself, and then one for the cover. And I just go ahead and take the Cure LT and I just kind of coat these gaskets and then put them on that way. Here we go. All right, let's put her up on here. It's uh, pretty easy to get the, the orientation of this right. Just the, the part that goes against the cam, the gear that goes into the cam is the one that's got a hole through it. It doesn't matter which one of these gaskets you put on first. Go ahead and keep the cover off for now. And remember how I told you the Cure LT doesn't uh, harden up, so it'll stay pliable. But what we're doing this for is because we're gonna go ahead and take some Vaseline and pack it inside of the uh, the oil pump itself to help prime it whenever we do initial start. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today, guys. Let me go back out. We'll go ahead and do the outro. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up the uh, short block assembly. We got a few more things to do. Still got to put on the. Uh, the oil pane cover or the <laughs> the cover on the bottom of the actual case we got a few other things to do for the um, oil pump and the tap not too much left on the short block that is a lot of information jammed into one episode and we got a lot more to come so guys stay tuned can't wait to see you thanks to everybody thanks to my new subscribers you guys are awesome don't forget to comment below with any questions that you have and don't forget to like share and subscribe guys i will see you guys the next one this is jason with jw classic vw and i'm out <laughs>